Welcome to this episode of Growing at Ryman Gardens. My name's Nathan Brockman, and I'm the Butterfly Wing Curator here at the Gardens. And on today's episode, we're going to spend some time in the Butterfly Wing after dark, looking at how butterflies spend the night. Each afternoon in the Christina Ryman Butterfly Wing, as dusk approaches, the butterflies begin doing their nightly behaviors. Now each species has a different nightly routine that they follow. Uh, today we're actually going to focus on the species that go through an evening roosting in large groups. This behavior begins usually with a behavior known as pre-roosting, where butterflies of similar species begin to gather slowly around the area that they're going to choose to roost that night. Here we're looking at some zebra longwings that have chosen their location to pre-roost. At this time there are actually five or six of these small clusters all hanging out together waiting for it to get a little bit darker so they can actually begin their nightly roosting behavior. As it gets a little later, the butterflies will actually begin their roosting behavior. For this behavior, what normally happens is there's a particular branch that all the butterflies seem to want to land on. The first two or three individuals will land on that branch, and then the rest of the butterflies will hover around them trying to knock them off that spot. In some cases where you have several branches that are, you know, of high access, you'll see several times where butterflies will come in be knocked off one branch and then moved over to another location. This behavior can take 20 to 30 minutes depending on the amount of light. Eventually though the butterflies will settle down and land within a close proximity of where it all began. Some species of butterflies such as these giant swallowtails actually roost sitting on top of the leaves while other species of butterflies like these zebra longwings, will actually hang down underneath the leaves. You will also see that the giant wood nymphs participate in this same behavior, where they're roosting from the bottom of the leaves. The advantage of being on the bottom of the leaves hanging down is, in the morning when it's time to begin flying, all you have to do is let go of the leaf you're hanging on to, drop down, and start flapping your wings. The downside is, being underneath the leaves, is that you don't get that early morning sun to help warm your body to encourage flight. This roosting behavior happens night after night, and it's believed in the wild and in the Christina Ryman butterfly wing that the same butterflies go and roost at the same location night after night, with the individuals coming from hundreds of miles around. The size of these roosting groups varies from a small number in the dozens to hundreds of the similar species roosting together in one location. The reason for these roosting groups are believed to be protection at night from you know, predatory species that may decide to eat them. Most of these roosting species are distasteful to predators, so if a nighttime predator happens to eat one individual, it's only going to eat one individual and it'll stop there. It won't go around eating several of them. It's also believed that it makes for a good time for the similar species to mate together. Since the Christina Ryman butterfly wing closes at 4.30, it can actually be hard to see this behavior happening in person. But when the days are short during the winter months, it's quite easy to come in within the 4.30 time range and see the butterflies doing both the pre-roosting behavior and the roosting behavior. As the days get longer through spring and summer though, it's actually hard to even see the pre-roosting behavior because the butterflies do their roosting and pre-roosting behavior so much later in the day. If you are ever fortunate enough to be in the butterfly wing while this behavior is going on, it's an amazing sight to see as literally hundreds of butterflies are actually flying right before your eyes in a space no larger than a 3 by 3 foot square. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Growing at Ryman Gardens. To learn more about Ryman Gardens or to see other videos, please visit our website at rhymeandgardens.com. Thank you.